So now that we've dug into JavaScript, we've seen lots of things we can do in the slides, and we've demonstrated a lot of the JavaScript code that we can use. And we've looked at a lot of things that are pretty straightforward, basically just executing functions. But now we're going to get a little bit further into some of the things that we can do with JavaScript sort of application-wise. So if I click on this sandwiches link, you're going to see that we actually just have a table here. There's not anything too interesting. But uh, if you click that over and over again, you'll see that it's going to refresh this. And that's because we're actually taking a bunch of different values in an array, and we're, we're populating this table dynamically using JavaScript. And this is based on an example that I did in my class a few years ago. We, uh, we decided that we were going to create this sandwich maker, and uh, a lot of different students suggested some interesting and complementary ingredients, and it very quickly went off, uh, off the deep end, and you know there were horrible things being put on this sandwich in ways that you wouldn't want to combine anything. Uh, a mustard, fries, mayo, and horseradish sandwich. Well, that actually doesn't sound that terrible, but uh, I'm not sure about peanut butter, jelly, coleslaw, and ranch. So we can see how this is actually created. If we take a look at our sandwiches page, you can see we're actually not using this external script here. We're doing all of this in, in, in the script element itself. So if, uh, you know, here you can see, like, we just have a quick comment. If this were Java, we'd use a, a string array. We declare that way. Uh, but we're not using Java. We're using JavaScript. And here you can see we use, uh, we, we declare this array, and it's going to have all of these different values in it. Now we have this div element, and we're going to basically have it empty. And you can see that in this HTML, this, this looks like it would be empty. But we're doing some things down here in uh, script. So note that we can have multiple script elements on our, our page. And here we're going to uh, use document.getElementById to access this particular element as an object. Once we have this, we are going to uh, create a counter, and we're going to start building up some text. Uh, here we have a table element, and then as long as this array still has values, we are going to output some value or output some things from it. So here we're going to have uh, you know each one of these sandwiches, and each one of these is now going to randomly pick a value. Uh, here we're going to use this one, and once we've got that value, we're going to remove that from the array using the splice uh, method. So here we're going to get the ingredient from a particular place in that array, and we're going to, because splice is going to reduce the size of that array, it's going to go down and down and down. So we'll be basically be using this to pull pieces out, and then when we're at the end, we'll we'll have uh, we'll have nothing left in that array. And you can see here that uh, we're going to output each one of these ingredients one by one, and then we're going to move on to the next uh, the next sandwich here. So we uh, we can do this over and over again. It's going to be a different set each time. So hey, if you're hungry and you're looking for lunch, this is a great way to uh, to come up with some ideas. I think there's a roll for sandwich uh, uh, channel somewhere. I don't know if it's on YouTube or TikTok, but hey, this could uh, this could be an alternative. So go ahead, uh, record yourself making one of these sandwiches. Try it out. Let us know how it goes. So the next uh, the next page here that we're going to take a look at is actually based on one of my favorite uh, stories that ever happened on the internet. Uh, there was a, a game developer, I think his name was uh, Ian Bogost, I want to say, uh, and around the time Farmville was very popular on Facebook, he, he gave a talk about how all of these social games were really dumb, and uh, he said everything, you know, basically you just uh, you have a cow and you click the cow and that's the game. And I think it was frustrating him in like sort of a funny way, so he, uh, he decided that he was going to go off and build a cow clicker game where the goal of the game was to click a cow and that's the game. And uh, he did it as a joke, as sort of a satire, and then <laughs> it took off and people used it like crazy. So, uh, you know, sort of he, this is something they kept adding new cows and new cows. And I think that my favorite part of the whole story is when they created an invisible cow for this game. So basically people were, were paying to click nothing. They were paying for nothing here just to click this screen. Uh, and, you know, it's just sort of one of those things on the internet that's, uh, you know, kind of one of those uh, compartmentalized stories that not a lot of people know about, but it is, is definitely one of my favorite uh, things that ever happened on the internet. It's uh, There's a whole long story in Wired Magazine about it from uh, several years ago, but we are going to simulate a very simple cow clicker game, and you can see we have a cow on this page, and we click that cow, and we get points. And this is I don't know, this might be the most fun game I've ever created. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, so if you click on the cow over and over again, you just keep getting points. And you can do this all day long. And, you know, I think JavaScript has a lot of number space. So you, you can do this for a very long time before uh, you roll back over into negative numbers. So how does all of this work? It's actually a pretty straightforward uh, little application that we've written. If we take a look at cow clicker, 
we have uh, another inline script. We're going to start off with a points variable. We set it to zero. And then we have this click that cow function. And every time we click it, we add 100 to the points. We retrieve the points element from the page using document.getElementById. We set its inner HTML to points plus whatever our current number of points is, and we log that to the, uh, the console. So this is really simple. Basically, we have an image. We've used an onClick attribute. Every time we click it, we call click that cow, and then we update the page. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So I built this example sort of on the fly in the middle of a class one time, and uh, you know, we, I think it kind of demonstrates how you can interact with events uh, on the page. But one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't really get very complicated with events, which is why we have this second cow dragger. And the cow dragger game is a little bit more involved because you have to actually click the cow and put it into the fence. Now, this little dotted line, this is the best I could do for a fence without having to get a little more creative. And uh, I don't know, sometimes my creativity is pretty much sapped. So, but when we add these cows to the space, you can see we can drag that right in there and we can drag that cow over and over again and you can kind of, there you go, see how that's working, it's really nice, you know, so that cow, just you just keep clicking and dragging that cow, keep dragging that cow into the fence and we can take this one too. So how does that work? Well, here we're gonna get a little bit more involved into our events. So again, we're using an inline script here and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get a little clever about how we kind of store the state of what's happening here, but we're going to use drop and drag events for this particular, uh, this particular application. So let's start with the HTML because it's usually the most straightforward part of this. So you can see we have our heading and then we have our scoreboard and you can see we're gonna manipulate that and change that later. Uh, but we have a cow pen and uh, when someone drops something here, we're going to execute this drop function. And uh, this drop function is going to uh, call in with this element and event, which is gonna be built in. This is gonna be the thing that captures the information. This is an object that has the information about this particular event that is happening. And you can see on drag over, we're going to allow drop. Because if we don't do this, we actually end up, you know, if we, you can see when we, we click this, you see this, this little plus icon says, okay, we can drop there. And that's what the allow drop is going to do. It's going to allow it, you know, we're going to return true from that allow drop. Uh, or we're going to event, or we're going to use a uh, prevent default from, from kind of saying like, no, don't do this. So this is going to allow us to, to drop there without having to, you know, get that operating system icon. So the things that make this work, draggable is equal to true. So that means that we can click this image now and drag it somewhere. That's that, that gets us that far. Uh, but once we do that, we want to actually do something to identify the thing that we are dragging. So here we're going to drag, we're going to call this function. Now note that drag and allow drop and drop, these aren't built in functions. These are functions we're defining. They can be any name, but uh, here we're going to drag this.id. So that's going to be this element ID, which is cal1, and then the event. So if we start with cal1, we're going to look at on drag start. Here we come up to on drag start. We're going to call drag. And we're not really doing anything here. We're just saying, okay, we've got the ID, we've got the event. So we're going to set my ID, this particular variable, to ID, and that allows us to keep track of which cow is currently dragging. So now we don't have to do anything magical when we actually drop this somewhere. So when we click this, what's happening is now we've got that ID and we've got the event, but all we're doing is keeping track of the particular thing that's being dragged. And when we drop it, we're going to call this drop function and drop is a little bit more involved. So the first thing we're gonna do is just prevent the default action of the browser. And then we're going to get the element that we've already stored. So the element from my ID. And uh, we're going to take the inner HTML for this particular, this uh, for our ID here. So you can see this is, uh, where do we get this ID? Oh, this is, yeah. So this is uh, our, our, current, uh, our current element. So um, ID.innerHTML is equal to data.innerHTML. So we, uh, we then basically take the image and put that into that particular, uh, that particular um, element. Then here, we're gonna to check to see which one of our, our IDs we're looking at so we can update the score. And then we just take a bit of HTML and we populate that uh, inner HTML of the score with that. But the, the thing that really makes this work is being able to identify which thing we need to change, identifying what's gonna populate it, and then using a little bit of trickery with our variable and a little bit of uh, the function calls themselves to, to allow that to happen. So now that you have this, you can create your own drags and drops if you need to, but 
there are a lot of different events in JavaScript. This is a little bit more of a complex one, but note that you can always get this uh, event from the particular thing that's happening on any of your on drag, on drop, on blur, on, on focus, any of those different events, that event is built in. And uh, you can actually get more information from that from the Mozilla site. It will have information about each one of those events. So you can kind of interact with the, the information from that event as you need. So hopefully all of these videos have given you a good overview of what you can do with JavaScript and have given you some, some feelings for some of the things that you can do and how they operate. Uh, so for now, you can kind of take these, make them your own, incorporate them into your projects, and uh, we'll get even deeper and deeper into JavaScript in upcoming uh, lectures. Thanks for watching.